the terrific race, ladies and gentlemen, the smoke and the flames now, and the famous crashing to the ground, not quite to the morning mass of the humanity. It was the Australian Grand Prix over the weekend, and it was a race that was supposed to be eventful. I mean, on lap four, Verstappen's engine started to produce a bit of smoke, which I was thinking, something's going to go tits up. That it did go tits up as brake exploded in the pit lane. So, with Verstappen out, many people thought, oh, this is going to be a great race. And, yeah, it somewhat was. It was a better race than it has been so far this season. But, that's not the funniest thing that happened. Because, after Hamilton had his retirement on about lap 20 or something like that, the Team LH psychos on Twitter had a full-blown meltdown in one of the best displays of Twitter insanity I have ever seen. So after Verstappen retired, Team LH was sitting there absolutely exploding with joy because finally Red Bull's domination run was going to come to an end. So was everyone else, but they were really going off the rails over it. I mean, these people were full on celebrating, they are probably punching their holes through walls out of excitement. And they were going off the rails basically in joy until Hamilton came to a crawl heading into the fast chicane on the back straight and retired from the race and after his bad start to the season this sent a few members of Team LH over the edge and here's what I say to them why don't you get out of the echo chamber for once you know you just sit on Twitter all day tweeting to people you don't even know or people who don't even know you to people who don't even follow you and will never see your tweets I know the likelihood of people seeing this video is very low but they sit there going off the rails in their own little echo chamber or with this echo chamber that they've created with other Team LH fans going off the fucking rails and you you know that Danny DeVito shrine that some kids made over in America as a joke and it was meant to be like this hole in the bathroom where I just got loads of Danny DeVito stuff and they'll just throw stuff there I swear that every team LH member has one of those and every day they have to donate something to that shrine whether it be a braid of hair I don't know a fingernail or something like that because they are actually clinically insane but also here's a better idea instead of spending your whole day on twitter how about you leave the house touch grass speak to someone it could be your family your friends who aren't twitter friends or discord friends or all football friends because you sit there all day degrading, losing your sanity over something. It's not the end of the world. And I know I'm getting riled up here, but it's absolutely fucking hilarious how these idiots will just implode over absolutely anything. And then heading throughout the rest of the race, it looked like Ferrari were going to get a double podium at the minimum until Leclerc managed to get past Norris and sort of disappeared off into the distance. Norris was sort of catching up towards him towards the end after he swapped position with Oscar Piastri because Piastri should have really got that podium spot instead of Lando, in my opinion. But on the final lap or penultimate lap for him, George Russell was hunted down Fernando Alonso and he was so much quicker and he pitted so he was behind him and he was a lot quicker and he didn't really need to pit. But heading into, I think, turn five and six... He oversteered slightly and went into the wall and destroyed his car. I mean, he practically ripped one heart, one side of the car off and he was standing there, or sitting there, sorry, in the middle of the track. Red flag, red flag, red flag, I'm in the middle of the track. Okay. Red flag, red flag. Red flag, you got strong. Red, 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 red. I'm in the middle, red. Fucking hell. I think he wants a red flag. I'm Jesus! I'm descendants of God! And you let me up! Watch this! But after this, there was one lap left and Science just cruised to the line to win in front of Leclerc with nice feeling in the podium. And naturally, Spain imploded. Viva España, altas los platos y corte el pueblo. Que vuelva a resurgir. But 
the most disturbing thing about it is the fact that Max pulled away by almost two seconds in the first two laps, even though he said that one of his brakes was on full hold for the first few laps until it exploded. Is that not a little bit concerning that he had one of his brakes applied and he was still pulling away from the field? He was braking on the straights and he was still pulling away. How is this possible? But... Regardless, it doesn't matter because Ferrari are extremely close to Red Bull in the championship, but that doesn't actually matter, does it? Because Red Bull's just going to pull away over the rest of the season. So, once the Ferrari fans suddenly have that realisation and stop having this high level of hopium and everything in their system, they're going to go back to their sad reality of understanding the pain that Ferrari causes to every single person who supports them or watches them. But my main question is, how the fuck did Carlos Sainz manage to win with a missing appendix? He could feel his organs moving about during the race. What the hell is this man doing? So to recap, Timo H needs to stop listening to the voices and leave the house. Carlos Sainz is somehow winning, even though he can feel his organs moving about and is distracted constantly. And Max Verstappen is fucking inevitable. Thank you and goodbye. Red, 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 red.